15x, and then I've got minus 1 half x squared, and minus 1 eighth pi x squared. Okay, that's what I get when I put those two together. And since these are both x squared, watch what I do here. A of x equals 15x. I'm going to factor out an x squared from both of these. So what I'd be left with, just watch this, negative 1 half minus 1 eighth pi x squared. So when I pull the x squared out of here, I get negative 1 half. Pull the x squared out of here, I get negative 1 eighth pi. I just put a plus here. Of course, we could distribute those through, it'd be negatives, and the x squared would go through. Now the reason I did that, because that's all just a constant, right? Negative 1 half minus 1 eighth pi, that's just a number. Who knows what it is? Now what about domain of this? Because I have my, I have my um, area function. Well, the smallest that x could be would be 0, all right? Because you could go and flatten this out and then use all of your perimeter for the up. All right, so we could have 0 for x, um, but there's no largest x that we could have because we, we could go and make the x really long. Oh, wait, 30. Sorry. 30. Um, let's do this. It's going to be tough to get the actual upper restriction on, on x, so let's just do this. It'll make our lives a lot easier. Let's just look between zero and infinity, all right? Let's just see what happens in here. We might be able to get this down to a closed interval, but let's just see, maybe between zero and infinity, we just have like one, one um, we're looking for a maximum. So maybe it just goes up and down one time and that's it. Um, let's try it. So derivative of this um, is, let's see, derivative 15x is 15 plus, all right, we have a constant here, so let's just, Bring the constant for the ride, derivative of x squared, the 2 comes out. So when the 2 comes out, I'm going to actually take the 2 that pops out and I'm going to multiply it through here. So negative 1 half times 2, that's negative 1. And then when I multiply that by 2, I get uh, negative 1 fourth pi. And now this is x. So that 2 just popped out. And now I need to set that equal to 0. So when I set that equal to 0, I get 15 plus... Um, negative 1 minus 1 fourth pi x equals 0. Let's move the 15 over to the other side. Or you know what? Yeah, I'll do that. You got negative 1 minus 1 fourth pi x equals negative 15. And then to solve for x, I divide through by, 15, uh, divide through by all that. So I have x is negative 15 over negative one minus one fourth pi. I think it's time to get that as a decimal. Number was this, 25. Hmm. As a decimal, what do we have there? There we go. The book does this. They, um, they, multi they fact out a negative here and a negative here, and they make that 15 over 1 plus 1 fourth pi. Then they multiply top and bottom by 4 to get 60 over. When you multiply here by 4, you get 4 here, and then the 4 and the 1 fourth cancel, you get pi. That's what the book does, but that's approximately um, 8.4. All right, 8.401. All right, and that's the only critical number I have. So if I go to a number line now, and put 8.401, and 
and pick some test points and plug these into the derivative. Um, I erased the derivative, but you could, you could plug some numbers in like uh, one, let's say 10, and you'll get that it goes up and down. So that means we have, the only maximum we have is at 8.401. So this means the dimensions are that your x needs to be 8.401. So this right here needs to be 8.401. And then to get your y, you plug that 8.401 into here. And if you do that, you should get that y is about 15. So this side right here should be 15. And that's all you need. If you do this, and this, then everything else is determined. This circle depends on how wide this is. So these are your dimensions. That's all they wanted, find the dimensions. All right. If you wanted to know the actual um, area, you would of course have to plug 8.401 into this right here. All right, that's it. Uh, hope that helps.